out at the Sandy River in Oregon, we have the Salmon Festival at Oxbow Park. Each year, Metro and the Columbia River uh, Intertribal Fish Commission join forces to celebrate this event. And it's such an important, it plays such an important role in, in reminding the community that they're here and how important they are. Kim uh, is taking us to the festival for a personal look into this amazing species and a his historic story. Hi, I'm Kim Cameron with Sustainable Today. We're here at the Oxbow Salmon Festival. This is the 24th year that the festival has been educating people on the spirit of the salmon, and this helps people understand and move towards better preservation of the species and the salmon run. There's your white tail flashing right now. Oh, and these guys are going up the stream here. Susan, can you tell us what's she doing? What's going on down there? Well, the one we're watching right now, she's making her red, and you'll see her turn sideways and flap her tail, and she's moving a small pickup load worth of rock. And when she gets that moved, she'll have a big hole dug, and she'll deposit her eggs in there. But you see the two big stripes of brown rock? In the middle, do you see two green flows of water? Okay, in the first green flow, there's two big fish right down here that are playing around. Do you see them? They're going this way, they're moving down. There are some males that have been jockeying in and out of her nest to see if they can spawn with her. Once she drops her eggs, they have to cover it with milt. And they, it has to happen simultaneously so that they fertilize the eggs. Oh, he's coming right at us, right there. In the white, in the white, there he is. In the white, in the white. He's going right over to the sand, two of them. They're right there by the sand. There he's flipping. There they go, he's jumping out of water. Prior to our involvement, it was really gauged on you know, uh, watching the salmon here in the Sandy River actually being able to spawn, and it was a really a festival atmosphere, maybe some education. And when the, what the tribes wanted to accomplish by uh, partnering with Metro to put on the Waikanishpum village was to show uh, how salmon affect our culture as well. So it's not just like uh, you know a scientific or a, you know the food, but it's actually a, a deep part of the culture of the tribes. And what we, we hope the message that people take away from that is that uh, the salmon are important enough to be part of a culture and that how, how can they be part of the culture of everybody here in the Northwest. What kind of activities here show how the salmon are involved with the culture and your tribes? Well, we have uh, quite a few. We have the uh, stick roasted salmon, which is a traditional salmon roasting method that the uh, tribes in this area use. Like if you leave that those sticks up there, the fish is going to just flop around. These are the same size of net right here you got in your hand. Uh -huh. They used to catch salmon right out here at Salilo Falls. Sometimes you get three, four fish in there. We have a net tying demonstration uh, that where the, the, a tribal fisher actually ties the old style nets and the old style knots uh, and makes other traps and weirs and whatnot. Um, we have uh, weavers uh, the, the making baskets that traditionally, you know, dried salmon would be stored in. And then there's also the, the, the broader based uh, celebratory aspects of salmon culture with like the drumming and the singing that are all part of that. And what actually makes this uh, setting special is that there's actually two reasons why it's special. One is because we invite people to be actually be participants in the demonstration. So rather than like what you'd see in a museum where you would go and just kind of be us watching them type scenario, that the people are actually encouraged to try out some of the things. So it's really um, engaging for people to, to like sample the culture. And also I, what I've noticed is that a lot of the elders share more information in this setting than they do in the in the museum. First thing you have to do is learn what a salmon is. What is the history of the salmon? What does it mean? What does it mean to the people? It means a way of life, food, 
to nourish yourself. And we share these foods, whether it be here, Alaska, Canada, the ocean, everybody eats these foods for subsistence. And I think that's the thing that we have to realize. This is a source of food for the living. And we have to all work cooperatively to protect and restore these fish so that we'll always have them. You know, to us, salmon is a, a part of a ceremony. It's, it's a, a religion to us. I think that's the difference. How can getting people involved in the festival right now ultimately help the conservation of the salmon? Well, I think that if people are, are separated from the salmon, it's a much harder sell for, to make the sacrifices that are required to save them. I mean, it's, going to be, it's not going to be cheap uh, to actually fix a lot of the problems that the salmon are, are, uh, and the obstacles that they face. But if people kind of have a connection, like a spiritual connection, a cultural connection to the salmon, then they're more willing to make those sacrifices and to have the, like the political will to make those choices. And uh, so that's what we hope to instill. And, and I think that the broader range, the whole festival does that. It, like, it like celebrates this animal that was iconic for the entire Northwest. Uh, traditionally, the, the Northwest boundaries were defined by anywhere salmon returned. And, and you know, it's like, well, with the, with the hydro system, we've kind of really diminished the size of the, of the Pacific Northwest in that regard because there are whole swaths that now no, no longer get salmon. And even the ones, that, the, the rivers and streams that um, get salmon, those numbers are still declining. And so, you know, I think if we can bolster that connection, people will uh, hopefully make the, make the choices and uh, for the, you know, this, to sustain this uh, amazing species. The female salmon will lay between two and 3,000 eggs. That's a lot of eggs. Nope, they don't, have any, they don't have the blood surrounding them anymore. So, yep, oxygen, exactly. But water is not very oxygen rich. There's only about two percent, it's only about 2% in very, in really good conditions. Those really good conditions are very, is very, very cold water. We need very cold water to carry more oxygen. And it's all connected. Without all of the connections, then we're we're all in big trouble. I guess I'm I'm an eternal optimist, but the but it's it's uh, it's hard to be that right now. The uh, the, the the environmental impacts that, that salmon are facing right now are very uh, daunting to the salmon, and seeing the continued numbers decline, I mean, going from the fact that we had all, you know 15 to 20 million salmon returning every year before the treaties were signed to today is, is very disheartening. But we can't fix it alone. The, the tribes can't, don't have the, the numbers or the, or the, uh, the, the will in the, in the area to, to like, you know, change the behavior of the region. And uh, it, we're gonna need to all work together and work collaboratively, work uh, in um, partnership with everyone that lives here to you know, re reassert this, uh, our connection. A couple of the exhibits that we have down here in the village show what the tribes are doing in collaborative efforts. Uh, for example, the Umatilla tribe works with ranchers and local irrigation districts to put water back in some of the streams. Or the Warm Springs have been working with cattle ranchers to do solar pumping stations so cattle won't get down into streams and building high-tech hatcheries that mimic nature rather than kind of make big concrete uh, aquariums that uh, the traditional hatcheries are all in efforts that uh, require a lot of partnership and a lot of collaboration with everyone and uh, and it's and I think it's in the region's best interest to, to uh, do that. What things are you going to do in your life to help preserve the salmon? We have a neighborhood project where the people in the neighborhood actually go out with stencils and stencil the storm grates, the storm water grates that say um, with a fish on it says don't dump no waste chemicals or things that you're trying to get rid of down the storm drains. A lot of people still don't realize how toxic that can be. Do a little bit more research and kind of get more informed and I don't know maybe get active and plant some trees or 
something like that. And I learned um, more about like the reds, the little nests that you can do. And then they had the, only a couple of the little salmon survive a year, like one or two. They all get eaten off by predators. My school, they every year they um, get a little batch of salmon that they help raise, and then they give it back to the people who release it into the wild. Uh, they go in the ocean. Mm -hmm. And what do they do after they're in the ocean? Where do they come? Back. That's right. Good job. How do you know so much about the fish? I'm smart. <laughs> And I'm Kim Cameron, bringing you the tools to make you more sustainable today. And now I'm going to go eat some salmon. <laughs>